Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we stay in San Francisco. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow the Instagram page as well. So let's get into it. In the last video, we talked about the Chop and Eddie Rock, but now we're gonna cover the section right in between them. That would be KO, also known as Knockout Posse. And they represent two blocks of projects on Eddie Street right in the heart of the Fillmore. But we're not here for the neighborhood. We're here for one of the wildest and most controversial rappers we've ever seen. So let's head back to the start. Born in 1976 in Pittsburgh, California was Marvin Watson Jr. His father is from the Fillmore and his mother is from the East Bay. And here's where things get controversial. Some say he was raised in the Fillmore, but most people will tell you that he's really from Pittsburgh. And for those who aren't familiar, that's a small suburban city about 45 minutes east of San Francisco. But it's not your typical suburb. In fact, it has definitely seen some rough times. However, saying you're from Pittsburgh doesn't really come with any credibility. Well, it's most famous for the rapper The Jacka and that never really hindered his respect so I don't know. However, Messi Marv was never interested in claiming it and maybe for good reason. Instead, he represents the Fillmore neighborhood of San Francisco. Although he claims to have lived there his whole life, anyone from there will tell you a different story. He actually moved there at 16 and began living with his cousins. This is because his father was absent and his mother was dealing with her own issues, which he talks about a lot in his music. But before rapping about the streets, he actually was rapping about nature and saving the planet. This was actually unknown until JT the Bigga Figga revealed it in 2019. He showed us that before moving to the Fillmore, Messy Marv was in a Pittsburgh rap group called Hook Boogie. However, at the time, nobody knew that because anytime he was in the Fillmore, he hid that side of his life. In fact, he started representing KO so much that he got the block tattooed on his arm. And on top of this, many will tell you that he adopted the rivalries that representing KO came with. But at the age of 19, Messy Marv began his own solo career with his cousin Sam Quinn. And right out of the gates, he was putting out mixtape after mixtape in the late 90s. But things began getting serious for his career in 2002 because that's when he dropped his album Turf Politics. The album caught the attention of the entire West Coast, even some people in Texas like Lil Flip. He even began making music with Mac Dre and went on tour with the whole Thiz Nation. And over the next two years, he stamped himself as a rapper that everyone respected. It was nothing more and nothing less. He was just a rapper who spoke the word of the streets. He really didn't care about catering to a national mainstream audience. All he really Really cared about is if the trenches loved him. But in 2004, he formed a new persona, which I would call the Bully Messy Mar. And it all started when G Unit rapper Obi Trice did an interview with 106 KMEL. In the interview, they asked him about how he liked San Francisco. Well, he replied jokingly, saying that he had to keep his ass on the wall the entire time, meaning that everyone in the city is, let's say, rainbowish. Well, Messy Marv did not like the comment one bit. Which honestly, if you even make fun of San Francisco, the people will try to convince you it's Chicago or something. Like, come on bro, no one is scared of San Francisco. Well, Messy Marv was no different, and he quickly released a G-Unit diss track where he calls them soft and says that he can get them knocked off. However, on the track, he made sure to clarify that he loves Detroit, which is the hometown of Obi Trice. And that's probably because the Bay and Detroit have always been locked in forever. Well, Obi Trice and G-Unit released two diss tracks called I'm Back and Ova Killa. However, 50 Cent eventually did call Messy Marv and Gooch, and they decided to squash the whole thing. But looking back on it, the fact that Messy Marv made a whole diss track because of a radio station comment about his city is wild. I'm not sure whether this proves his point or Obi's point. Either way, Messy Marv's erratic behavior would continue, but this time within his own family. In 2007, he began falling out with his cousin and fellow rapper San Quinn. An argument between the two turned into a diss track by Messy Marv called Killa. And on the track, he said some of the wildest things imaginable. At first, it was calling him a and saying that he snitched as well. He then said that San Quinn is soft and always called him to handle his issues. All of that is still somewhat mild and recoverable. But the second half of the song may be the most disrespectful I have ever heard. The second verse opens up by Messy Marv saying, I had Cheryl T before you married her. Cheryl T is Sam Quinn's wife, for those who don't know. Oh, it gets worse. Messy Marv then says that he will run inside Sam Quinn's mom's house on Grove Street and let's say, do the do with her. Okay, first of all, this is just a weird thing to say, but also, wouldn't that be his own aunt? If Sam Quinn is his cousin, then Quinn's mom 
mom is Messi's aunt, and he wants to what? And the delusion continued when he said that he has the whole Fillmore with him despite not even stepping foot in the city in years. And finally, Messi would end the song talking about how thick San Quinn's sister is. And wouldn't that be his own cousin? What in the Alabama is going on with Messi Mar? Well, ultimately, this internal rivalry stayed on wax and never resulted in any real life consequences. But maybe that's because Messi Marv was everywhere except the Bay. Unfortunately, the Messi Marv antics began to overshadow his greatness, and if you don't believe me, go check out his old music, you will not be disappointed. Well, after the San Quinn beef, Messi Marv ended up catching a case and being cellmates with an LA bounty hunter from Nickerson Gardens. From there, he got put on and started representing BHB to the fullest. This made many people in the Bay Area mad, especially the Fillmore. The number one rule in the Bay back then was to represent your block and your block only. And although they respected the LA politics, the whole red and blue thing was seen as nonsense. This move by Messi had people feeling like he lost his roots and pride in the area. And after this, he moved to LA, then to Little Rock, Arkansas, which I forgot Arkansas even existed. Like there's no way people actually live in Arkansas. Like imagine waking up, looking outside, and you're in Arkansas. Couldn't be me. Anyways, his next stop would be Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is another really random place for him. Well, although he was bouncing around state to state, he somehow would not stop making enemies in the Bay. And this time, the victim would be Oakland legend Too Short. On a random day in 2011, Messi Marv receives a call. The man on the phone tells Messi Marv that if he doesn't sign with his label, he's going to mess him up. The man claims to be Too Short, and instantly Messi Marv is furious. So in his classic fashion, he heads straight to the studio. And this is where he records an unwarranted but still somewhat valid record. Well, on the song, he pretty much reveals that Too Short grew up in LA and not Oakland, which ended up actually being true. In fact, Too Short didn't move up north until he was 16. I don't think this is an issue because he did become a man in Oakland. The only thing is that he never represented LA but featured mostly LA rappers on his albums. And on the diss track, Messi Marv exposed that Too Short rarely featured Bay artists, kind of insinuating that he forgot his roots. And another thing that he said is that Too Short and Mr. Fab tried to get publicity off Oscar Grant. And this opened up a new can of worms, Mr. Fab versus Messi Marv. But before Mr. Fab responded, Too Short released a Messi Marv diss track called Where You At? And this may be one of the funniest diss tracks of all time. First, Too Short revealed that Messi Marv isn't really from San Francisco. He claims that he called the top dogs in the neighborhood and they said that Messi Marv is a fraud. Well, all of this dissing never really caught up to Messi Marv, but then he got a little too close to California. That would be Reno, Nevada, which is only a couple of hours from Sacramento and maybe three and a half from the Bay. Well, Messi Marv is booked to perform a show in Reno. And for those who aren't familiar, Reno is probably one of the strangest cities you will ever visit, if you ever visit. It's literally right next to Lake Tahoe, but somehow looks nothing like it. And downtown is full of zombies and disgusting motels. It's the closest thing to Breaking Bad I've ever seen in real life. It only exists for two reasons, the casinos and an annual A tournament. However, it is a popular place for California rappers to perform. That's because many people will drive up Highway 80 and spend a cheap weekend at the casinos and catch a concert. And that takes us to September 7th, 2013. Messi Marv is set to perform at 1.30 a.m. at the Circus Circus Casino. So the promoters pay him $5,000 up front to perform. So then comes the night of the performance and Messi Marv is nowhere to be found. The promoters then head to his hotel room and knock on the door, but fail to get a response. So they're absolutely pissed and can't do anything about it. So the next day they bang on his door again, but this time he opens up. Boom! They storm in his room and bat! They leave Messi Marv on the ground. And to add fuel to the flame, they go on his phone and snap a picture of him and post it on his Instagram. Well, you think this would be a wake up call for Messi, but no way. But he also filed a police report, which I'm not sure is snitching or not. You guys let me know in the comments. Well, Filthy Rich definitely voiced his opinion and straight up called Messi Marv a snitch. And here we go again. Messi Marv heads back to the booth to record a Filthy Rich diss track. On the track, he calls Filthy soft and says that he never hurt nobody. He also disses Oakland rap 
rapper Mr. Fab as well. And in response, Mr. Fab dropped a diss track where he imitates Messi Mar. Honestly, I was disappointed in this track because I expected a better song from Mr. Fab. And that takes us to February 8th, 2015. While in Rockwall, Texas, Messi Marv gets pulled over and arrested for driving without a license or registration, and also for having something else in his possession as well, a substance that may be the reason for all his wild behavior. In California, chances are he would have spent one day in Santa Rita and out the next, but this is Texas where they actually enforce laws, so Messi Marv spent three years behind bars. And he finally got out in 2018, and that takes us to the most interesting part of the whole story. This is the clout chasing internet version of Messi Marv, so let's get into it. Once Messi Marv got out, he made some very strange comments in an interview. If you can remember, he used to go on tour with Mac Dre and even had plenty of songs together. Well, in the interview, Messi Marv says that he never messed with Mac Dre. He then put out a song with Mac Dre's face on the cover with holes in it. The strange Mac Dre diss came out of nowhere, so Crest rapper J Diggs stepped up to the plate to defend his friend's name. He makes a video and says that Messi Marv is foul and tells him that he's going to have to catch these hands. So in response, Messi Marv takes it to a whole new level. November 15th, 2018. Messi Marv and his friend decide to head to Vallejo and record the entire process for social media. So they drive through the crest and pull up to J Diggs' childhood block. However, the only people on the block are children and grandmothers. Regardless, his friend says let's knock one, insinuating you know. Well, Messi Marv decides not to do it. Instead, he hops out and yells, this is Frisco Bounty Hunters, which sounds goofy even saying it. So after driving away, Messi Marv posts the whole video on Instagram and J Diggs is not happy. But he also knows that he's dealing with a clown, so he doesn't take it that seriously. J Diggs posts on Instagram that he's been in Hawaii and he's not worried about it. But then he said that the Fillmore is known for powderheads, which pissed off a lot of people from there. A lot of people felt like he didn't have to include the neighborhoods in this personal affair. And just when you thought that no one would ever try to work with Messi Marv again, a big factor stepped up to the plate. Considering that he dissed Too Short, Mr. Fab, Filthy Rich, G-Unit, and his own cousin San Quinn, you'd be a fool to even be around him. But later in 2018, Mozzie decides to sign Messi Marv to a deal. And shortly after, they released a joint album called Chow Time. And the project was surprisingly good and even had a major hit song called Bass Rock. But this move by Mozzie actually ruffled some feathers. Filthy Rich felt betrayed by Mozzie. Because remember that Mozzie and Filthy were really close for like 5 years. And Filthy felt like Mozzie should have at least let him know beforehand that he's going to sign a rapper that he has issues with. But what do you guys think? Did Mozzie at least owe Filthy a heads up? Or even worse, was he out of line for even working with a rival of his friend? And to make everything worse, Jay Diggs decided to make a Messy Marv diss track called Where Jay Diggs At. And he actually had Lavish D in the video. Oh my, the California politics. But ultimately it all made sense because Mozzie Ozzy was a huge fan of Messi Marv growing up and he wanted to help one of his childhood idols. If you pay attention, you can really see the similarities in how they talk, their mannerisms, and everything else. I pretty much look at Mozzy like if Messi Marv and the Jacka had a baby and then he was raised by Tupac. Well, after the Mozzy signing, Messi Marv's fans thought that maybe he could turn the corner and get his life together. But instead, his life took a completely different route. Messi Marv did some interviews back in 2019 and he looked really bad, almost as if he's been living on the street. It's sad to see a legend turn out like this, but everyone has their demons and no one knows what he's really been through. Do you guys see Messi Marv as a legend and where do you rank him in your all-time Bay Area rappers? But that's gonna conclude this episode of Swamp Stories. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Peace!